Cool. We'll go ahead and get things started. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Fantastic. Um, so hi, everyone, and welcome to our tech talk with Checkout.com. I'm Devin, and I'm a part of the team here at Retool. And today I'm excited to be joined by Joe, Sam, and Alex from the team at Checkout. Joe is Checkout's engineering director for their developer platform, and he's been an integral part of Checkout's growth over the last three and a half years. He helped pilot their internal tools platform and serves on their architecture board. He's joined by Sam, a senior software engineer, and Alex, a senior data scientist at Checkout, who both built multiple Retool apps, some of which uh, we'll be demoing today. Today, they'll share an in-depth look at how Checkout thinks about internal tools, along with the learnings and insights they've gained over the last few years of using Retool as their app building layer for their internal platform. If you've joined us for one of these events before, you'll know that we like to keep these reasonably conversational. I've prepared a few questions for Joe and the team, and we'll use those to frame our conversation. And from there, we'll see a few examples of the tools they use every day before moving over to uh, some Q&A from the audience. We will also record today's session and share it with everyone who RSVP. So with the logistics out of the way, uh, I'd love to start by learning a little bit more about how you all came to checkout and the team you call home there. So let's start with Joe and then we'll move over to Sam and Alex. Hi, thanks, Devin. Um, good to be here. Um, so yeah, my name is Joe Hutchinson. Uh, been with checkout now for a little over three and a half years. Uh, time's really flown by, I think like everyone. Um, I joined Checkout from another fintech firm. Um, I uh, was getting approached by them for um, probably for about six months, maybe maybe 12 months, um, uh, just, you know, wanting to interview and things like that. And I was always busy. Um, I was kind of pushing them away. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, one day I, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to interview because I just want them to stop bothering me, basically. And um, I was so glad I did, to be honest. Um, you know, uh, I quickly realized through the interview process that, hey, these people are actually really nice to work with or seem that they would be. Um, uh, the company is really successful, um, seems to be on like a really fast upward trajectory, um, which I really liked the look of. Um, and, and kind of seemed to hit everything that I wanted from a company, like a lot of ownership, a lot of empowerment, kind of that entrepreneur, entrepreneurial uh, kind of spirit to everything that they were doing. Um, it just really resonated with me. Um, I've never really looked back since joining. Um, it's been by far the best job that I've ever had. And it scares me a little bit that I can't figure out why I would ever want to leave. So that's me. Wonderful. Thank you for that intro, Joe. And we'll uh, we'll go ahead and move over to Sam. Yeah, sure. Hey, so I'm Sam. I'm a senior software engineer. And uh, I joined Checkout, I think, I think it must be coming up to two years now. Similarly, time does fly. You know, I feel like I was saying six months ago and it was only like a couple of months ago. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of, as you do, I get, you know, I got the the LinkedIn message and I kind of, yeah, sim similar kind of story. You know, I, I tend to ignore those, you know, you, you kind of push them away. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly happy where I am. You know, I, I, I'm not particularly looking. Um, but checkout.com, right, that's a website, you know, checkout.com. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll take a look at the website. Let's, you know, see what they're about, what they do. Maybe look through the about section or whatever. Um, and I was just I was just scrolling through the website. And I just thought this is really polished, you know, like this is really, really clean, really well put together. And you know, they, they clearly show what their value proposition is, you know, and, and what it's like to work at the company and what they're doing and, you know, the barriers that they're breaking through. And I just thought if someone's got the time and effort to put that much care into their, like, you know, essentially what is a landing page, right? Like their, <laughs> their marketing side, um, then they're clearly going to have that same care and attention for the, for the engineering side. Um, so I kind of, I thought, well, I'll, I'll give this a try, right? You know, it's, you know, I don't have to say yes. And very similar story to Joe, I kind of went along and, and was blown away by the the expertise and the friendliness of everyone in the interview and just thought, yeah, go on. Like, I, I'm excited for this one now. And, and thankfully I got the job. So yeah, really happy. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Sam. And uh, lastly, we'll round intros out with Alex. Thanks, Devin. Um, so hi, everyone. So obviously, I'm Alex, uh, working in the Checkout performance team uh, as a data scientist since 2020. So yeah, just a couple of days before COVID hit. Um, 
So I was working previously in a smaller startup called Process Out uh, that has been acquired by Checkout. Um, so that was like a partner and we were working with them since uh, like multiple years. Um, and then, yeah, when, when the news came out, uh, it was like pretty, pretty big news. Uh, so, so yeah, so, and we are basically working for both internal and external purposes. Uh, and our goal is to optimize checkouts uh, and our merchants payments uh, acceptance rate. Um, so yeah, that's me. Wonderful. Thank all three of you. And uh, I'm confident that most folks watching know what checkout is, what you do, but for those who don't, uh, Joe, can you tell us a little bit more about what checkout does? Yeah, sure. Um, so checkout's a, a payment processor. So, you know, you can, you know, let's say that you're, you know, um, starting up your business, um, you want to be able to maybe uh, you know, take some money from your customers, hopefully. Uh, you're going to make some sales, something like that. Um, obviously, you're going to need to integrate with uh, the various schemes and things like that. It's a, it's a non-trivial effort for, for anyone that's not done this. Um, a lot of complexity. There's a lot of reading, and you know these standards change quite, quite regularly. Um, so it's an ongoing maintenance effort as well. Um, and additionally, there's a lot of kind of um, complexity in, in, in optimizing um, that payment flow, um, ensuring that you know you get that high acceptance rate. Um, and this is really kind of where you start relying on expertise of um, individuals or you know companies like Checkout to, to be able to make your life really easy to help you on this journey. Um, to give your customers that best experience that you want to give them. Um, so checkout deals with this full kind of end-to-end -end, um, journey for uh, merchants. Um, and um, we try and make it as easy as possible with like very simple APIs, really great documentation. So you can get up and started super quick. It's a really great description there. Uh, Sam and Alex, anything you would add to that? Um, yeah, maybe if I may had something. Um, so today, accepting payments really became mainstream. Um, so any company that, that really wants to accept payment today can do it pretty easily. Um, what really differentiates us from our competitors is performance. Um, so I don't know, imagine you have between 5, 10, 15% of your payment that failed for a different reason. And we really focus on this part. So we... Um, we don't want to let merchants uh, let money on the table. So especially in a context like today with inflation, like every company will try to optimize their cost. Um, and at some point, the first really entry point of revenue for merchants uh, will be uh, the, the payment part. Uh, so we want to be in front, uh, like we're in front row to maximize the, the, the revenue. So, so, yeah. Fantastic. Great. Well, uh, I'd love to begin to double click with Joe into how your team thinks about building software in general. And uh, to kick that off, Joe, what are your considerations when evaluating new software, specifically new companies? Um, yeah, there's, there's kind of a few things here. Um, we look at obviously the, you know, technology fit, you know, is it, is it going to add value um, to what we're doing? Um, there's, obviously a, a million different vendors out there, all different types of products, um, but really kind of looking at what's the return of investment here. Um, is it making our life easier? Um, how well does it integrate with maybe other technologies that we're already using? Mapping to kind of broader business strategy as well. You know, um, checkout runs, like I mentioned before, like a very entrepreneurial, uh, spirit. We like to be owner operators. We like our technologies that we use to, to be in this mindset as well. But it's a very decentralized um, structure. Um, something that I think for the broader industry is kind of moving this way. Um, and we really look for companies that are like Checkout. Um, Checkout's rapidly evolving. Um, I mentioned about that really fast upward trajectory. Um, 
we've grown so much just in the time that I've been at the company and that's not very long. Um, and, um, you know, now valued at 40 billion, um, with a series D, uh, raised just recently. Um, and, um, you know, we, we look at for partners, uh, on that journey, people that are going to work with us, um, that have got the same kind of attitude to, you know, doing fast, uh, releases of new features, uh, open to feedback and change and just, just good to work with. Right. Um, I really kind of looking for people to accelerate um, that that trajectory for us. So that's that's kind of the the big criteria that we go for. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And and also congratulations on your Series D. That's that's of course very exciting. I think this is a good transition point as well. You know, with all this in mind, into uh, what did you originally plan to build when you first started using Retool? Uh, and I'd love to also hear like. How did we fit into your needs when you found us? Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a funny story, really. Um, so like in checkout, it's kind of different to a lot of technology companies that I've worked at. Um, the tech stack is is very fluid. Um, as as a you know developer within checkout, you don't need to wait for you know maybe like a VP or like a director to say, hey, you can, you know, you can use this new tool now like um, you can trial things yourself um, come with solutions and for most times the business will go yeah that looks great um, so you know rewind about two two years ago now um, I was um, a, an engineering lead um, across uh, a couple teams but one of the teams that I was um, kind of leading on um, was a payouts team. We had um, we'd built this kind of new product that was allowing uh, merchants to uh, basically pay out money to their customers. Um, it could be for gambling type merchants. You know, you've maybe made a lot of uh, winnings and uh, you as an individual, you want to kind of cash out or something like that. Or it could be, you know, for other cases as well. And um, so that was kind of the use case of the, the product. Um, we built this thing. It was, it was quite new. It was uh, um, in, in, in the business. And we wanted to kind of expand it out, more features, everything like that, pretty typical of any kind of new product. But at the same time, we wanted to improve kind of the operational support of uh, the transactions that were moving through the system. We could monitor them all with all of the systems that we've got in checkout already, but we wanted to be able to have some flexibility to be able to like do certain actions and make that easier to, to kind of manage, you know, see all the payouts that are in the flight, their current status, this kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and we wanted to kind of integrate that in a really nice, simple to use UI. Um, I'd been told about uh, from a, a colleague of mine um, that, Retool was actually um, a pretty interesting tool to look at. And so I, I kind of just one Sunday morning decided to um, spin it up locally on my machine. Um, and without reading any of the documentation on Retool's site, um, had a working app in 15 minutes, um, connected it to um, some of the data sources that was interested uh, to use within checkouts infrastructure and immediately thought hey, if, if I can do this in 15 minutes, like uh, this thing, this thing's got like, you know, um, some potential. Um, and yeah, so really from humble beginnings, uh, completely unstructured evaluation. Um, but it was just showed potential immediately. We've never looked back. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and Joe, you sort of follow the the canonical retool example of someone who, you know, you have something that you need to build. You know that you don't want to go and build from scratch. You don't want to go through all the hassle of figuring this out. Um, and you're able to spin it up quite fast. And, and <clears throat> that's really remarkable. And I'd love to hear for someone else at checkout today, what does it look like when they want to go about building a new app for themselves or for their team? Yeah, so in, in today's world, um, 
we have um, we have a very simple retool structure. Um, we've kept it really simple because we were very much learning about the product as we're using it. Um, I think we probably ran into a number of the pitfalls, but by process of like kind of simple changes, we've got to a point where it's just it's been pretty much rock solid for us. Um, the in terms of like uh, a user getting access now, um, it's very simple. Um, they make an access request. Uh, we have a ticketing system within checkout. Um, so they can quickly just say, I want to have access. Um, and they can specify uh, which uh, retail cluster. Uh, we run two clusters, um, staging and production. Um, and they can specify which, or which cluster they want to have access to or both. Um, line manager approval, um, they're given access through SSO. Um, they can then log in. Um, one, of the, uh, one of my team then just assigns them to uh, the appropriate permissions within uh, Retool right now. Um, in the not too distant future, we're going to be using uh, Retool's OpenID feature, which is going to allow us to um, actually specify um, and create users uh, with the right kind of um, uh, in the right teams and things like that, and just push everything. Uh, oh, oh, it's going to be a lot smoother. Um, but really, right now, um, it's it's a pretty painless um, exercise. We're trying to make it completely automated longer term. But I need Retool's help on this. We'd be happy to help you with this uh, and make sure that you know we can meet your needs there. And I think. You know, again, this this follows this example of just really beginning with something tangible. You had this app idea something like two years ago, and and how many apps are, are checkout at today? Uh, it's constantly changing, to be honest. Um, I think we're about fifty four right now. Could be a little bit more. Um, this is across like um, uh, all of the teams in in checkout. Um, it, it's quite amazing uh, for us. Like we've we've not really done any kind of like internal marketing within, within the business for this. It's very much like people just get to discover that there's this tool around and what it can do. And, um, and uh, I always kind of find it quite nice that what I experienced two years ago um, and that kind of like uh, that feeling of like, Hey, this is really cool. Um, I've seen it play out time and time again as you know, different engineers have come up to me and said, hey, I've started using Retool. This is actually really cool. <laughs> um, it's helping me a lot. It's making my life easier. So it's quite nice. Yeah, that part really never gets old. Um, I, it was a large part of why I joined Retool. I had a very similar experience to you, Joe, where I, where I opened it up before I joined the team and was just blown away. And uh, seeing person after person you know, get started and, and try it out and really have that same experience, I think, uh, is just really remarkable. Uh, you, you don't see it too often. But uh, another another really interesting piece, I think, from what Checkout has done is really just enabling your teams to use Retool in this sort of hub and spoke model where you've enabled your organization to scale really well uh, and you prepared for scale at the onset. And at this point, a lot of our customers actually follow the model that Checkout ended up defining for Retool uh, in terms of your deployment path, in terms of how you think about all of these things and uh, I'd love to maybe pivot into hearing a little bit more about uh, Checkout's architecture board. So to my understanding today, you have an architecture board that folks can go to and get support when they need to build, but I'd love to just hear from you a little bit more about what that looks like and how it came to be. Yeah. Um, so like Checkout, like I mentioned originally, like very entrepreneurial company, um, really big into like the empowerment of all the engineers within the company. Um, it attributes a lot of its success as a company to the capabilities um, of their engineers. Um, and so back when, back when I joined Checkout, uh, we didn't really have like an architecture board. Um, and we were a much smaller company. Um, in a smaller company, you can, obviously you can align on how you think about, you know, and design a new product. Um, the technical architecture of it, you can 
just speak to your colleagues. <laughs> There's probably only like 20 of them anyway, so <laughs> it's not too difficult. Um, and you can all agree and you just go, um, it's fine. Um, it doesn't really scale. Um, you know, you now with checkout, you can't speak to 500 engineers or something like that um, very easily. Or by the time you do, your product's probably redundant at that point. Someone else has built it and gained market on that. Um, so what we were finding is like, we wanted to kind of, um, for this architecture board, not to be kind of like a, um, a stage gate in, in checkout. We wanted it to be kind of this, a positive force to help you as an engineer, like design the very best systems that you can. Um, so it's very much seen in like a positive light. Um, back when, like before, like we didn't have any of this. So you were very much like just, it was left up to your own devices. So this is kind of a, like an optional thing that you can do within checkout now. Um, you'll go and like do a design. Um, you'll do all your discovery for your product. You'll kind of do your architecture as a, within your team, you'll get pretty comfortable with, you know, the design of it and think it's pretty good in your opinion. And then you'll, you'll bring it to, to the board. And basically this kind of architectural board or committee is um, composed of like some of the most technically capable people across the hall of checkout. And we kind of have all different people joining different, you know, different sessions. So it changes over time. Um, but they're there to kind of like review and give you kind of feedback and ideas and, and point any problems out as well. Um, and they'll work with you. And it's really kind of that helping hand. So I think like as an engineer, I find it quite kind of reassuring um, to have this because, you know, some of the products that you're designing, like in checkout, they're like business defining products. If they work really well, they change the bottom line of the business for years to come. Um, if they're done badly, <laughs> you can damage checkout for years to come. <laughs> and I think it's probably the same in a lot of companies. Um, so you kind of, um, having anybody that has your back on your design, um, is really helpful. Yeah, totally. And, and being able to have that sort of safety net and, and those resources that people can easily go to, it, it eliminates the question that folks inevitably will have because uh, especially with something like Retool, we, we certainly are not no code. Uh, we sort of fall in this low code space, but at the end of the day, we, we really follow this principle of having this low floor and high ceiling where you can get a lot done without the need for code, but that second that you need that custom feature, you need that custom business logic, you can of course write that directly inside of Retool. And so having a team like uh, Checkout's architecture board that folks can go to when you know they need a little bit of help with a certain design or they need a little bit of help uh, with a certain piece of functionality, I think is, is really exceptional uh, and something that a lot of organizations uh, do and, and could also benefit from. So thank you for sharing some insight on that, Joe. and. Uh, I'd love to, you know, maybe berate you with one last question. I, I've been giving you a lot of questions, Joe, but uh, before we, we move on and look at some tangible internal use cases, I'd love to hear just as one of our earliest users, how have you personally seen Retool evolve with Checkout? Um, I, I've, I think it's been a bit of a whirlwind, to be honest for me. Um, so when I started using Retool, it was basically a lot of the kind of resources that Retool supported back then were already kind of like meeting what I needed to do, um, uh, at least within the team that I was evaluating it for. Um, and, but what I found, uh, I wasn't really expecting the kind of how quick uh, additional features were going to be added into, into Retool. Um, it's been a kind of pleasant surprise for me. Um, the, um, I think with like, we've been use, uh, starting to try out like using protected resources. Um, we've been looking at uh, using uh, distributed tracing as well from, from retail um, and a number of other features. Um, and I've seen kind of pretty consistent um, kind of updates here. 
Um, we've always found like the retail team to be very kind of um, uh, willing to kind of like say, okay, yeah, this doesn't, this isn't quite right, but we're going to fix it. Or we're kind of, we've got this design um, for this new feature. Uh, what do you think? And it's, it's very much been like, I like the element of collaboration there. I like the kind of honest communication. Um, and it's been, uh, that, that's been great. I, I, and I think I've th seen like, um, you know, retail has always for us been like, you know, very, kind of a very stable product. Um, when we have had, you know, the, the occasional issue with it, it's such a simple thing to fix. Um, so, and I think that goes to like the point and the actual intent of retail that it's designed to like make your life easier. Um, you know, if, if this thing was really difficult to operate and, you know, scary to, to manage and upgrade and maintain, um, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be using it. Um, and, um, but no, it's, it's been, it's been, uh, super easy. Um, yeah, a little bit scary at times, actually, even like the upgrades, I just find it that I haven't had an issue upgrading it has been, uh, a, a huge shock to me. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's all, that's all really great to hear. And it, it might sound corny. Uh, you know, we, we often talk about how like Retool is like built by developers for developers. It sounds like just a catchy tagline, but at, at its core, it really is the truth, right? Like we are a group of engineers and we understand like what we can do to try and benefit other engineers' lives. But at the end of the day, engineers at checkout and engineers at any of our other customers or our newest users are going to have all different experiences and they're going to have these specific custom areas that they're really excited about, they really want to see happen. And we want to try our best to keep the platform just as expansive as possible while still simplifying a lot of the, the headache type things of you know resource management or being able to have modularity or any of those sort of things. And so I think you, you really hit a lot of those on the head, Joe. And, and again, we want to thank the checkout team for, for being such an integral part of our feedback loop and providing us with a lot of your insights from what you've seen, again, as one of our earliest users. And so... Yeah. The, with, I was going to say actually on that, Devin, um, like even when we, um, we've been like using retail, we've been using it with, um, actually being engineers, um, kind of managing and operating retail, um, rather than kind of like a, uh, high, um, high skill team that maybe it's like senior DevOps. Um, no, it's literally, you can run it like any other product. So it's very easy. Very happy to hear. And, and thank you again, Joe, for, for all that insight into how Checkout has done all of these really great things. Um, I'll give you a break here. And, and what we'll go ahead and do is uh, we, we've talked a lot about this intention of uh, how, or how you started with this intention to build a single retool app and, and this suddenly became dozens of apps across all these different engineering teams. And I'd love for us to now begin to double click into uh, what some of these apps actually look like and how you use them in your day-to-day -day work. And so with that, I'd love to start with Sam and Maybe you could give us a walkthrough of your life balances tool. Yeah, sure. Um, so I kind of I precursor this uh, as I share my screen here to kind of say that our team is quite an internal team. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen here. But yeah, our, our, our team is um, is generally you know we don't really deal with with the with the merchants. Uh, we we don't even deal with kind of the top level of of the other teams that do deal with the merchants. We're kind of almost two steps removed. So we're, we're very very internal. Um, so we don't really have any UI building experience, you know, within the team, not in, not in our current roles anyway. Um, so when we kind of, we, we have this, this stakeholder requirement where um, currently business, uh, people from around the business who need to see the balances of a given merchant, um, they'll come to us, they'll open a, a ticket and say, hey, can I, can I get the balances or can I get the balances on this particular day? Um, and then someone will, you know, it will go in the in the queue of things that need doing, you know, or get picked up maybe the next day. Uh, someone will essentially go and make like an API call or, you know, go look in a database somewhere, get the numbers out, put them on the ticket. And by that point, it might be too late, you know, you know, or the numbers have changed um, or, you know, any kind of uh, issues might come up. So we kind of started looking into as a team, a tool or some kind of way to expose this, you know, to not just technical members um, of other teams, you know, people that 
would be comfortable making that API request or, you know, querying a database, but also non-technical members that can then go and, and, you know, be able to just paste in an ID and see the, uh, the life balance, you know, immediately right then. So that there's none of this delay. They don't have to, to go through us and wait around for us and we're not the bottleneck. Um, and it really puts the power back in their hands to be able to, you know, see the data that they need to do their day-to-day -day jobs. Um, so this is kind of the tool that we built and very similar story to Joe, you know, the, the initial mock-up of this was done in, yeah, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And it looked very similar to what you're seeing here. Um, obviously we cleaned it up a little bit, you know, had some, some feedback loops going on and, and, you know, slowly improved it in an agile way, but, um, but yeah, generally it kind of looked like this. So I'll start on the panel on the right here. And a, a user would essentially just kind of paste in an identifier here, and you can see immediately, you know, it's it's pulled out that data and and given um, the balances for this particular um, merchant. So then they can go ahead and refresh this, and you'll see this kind of figure down here update, and they can see that you know these are the balances at this particular time. They can go and look at historical date in the past, you know, if they wanted to to look back at, at the first of the month, um, and it will pull that data through. Obviously, this is test data, so it's it's not changing, but you know, potentially this, if this was a real merchant, it would uh, it would be updating depending on what day you picked. Um, it kind of gives you a little bit of details around this, you know, and, and kind of what what currencies it's all in, and you can go back and look at all of the you know the the balances across all of the different um, you know the structure of that particular entity. They can kind of see these these details and click into any one of these, and it will update. Um, so you can kind of see it's it's when you're talking about that low low floor versus high ceiling. You know, this is this is kind of the low floor side of things, but we just really wanted to to very quickly and very easily. You know, take that away and give that um, give that power, yeah, back to the to the kind of other other members of the team. So I kind of I'll talk a little bit about you know why we chose Retool because you know as Joe said, there's no internal marketing, right? We kind of we weighed up our options, we looked around and we asked around in other places in the business and said, you know, hey, look, we're looking at building a, a UI, and we're we're not sure what kind of what's available to us. You know, are there uh, like is there like a React component library that we can go away and use? You know, is there any style guides? Is there all you know all this kind of stuff? And we were trying to find all this data out and 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 look through all our like internal documentation and and see what kind of was the the recommended approach. And we stumbled across Retool, um, kind of started asking around and digging into the documentation that we had written up, you know, and, and guides and best practices and things. Um, and we kind of realized, well, we don't have any of, of this, you know, yeah, sure, we probably could, you know, we're all talented guys, you know, guys and girls, we can go away and we can learn React, we can, you know, work out how to do it, and it will it will be functional. Um, but obviously, this is quite secure data, we've got to think about like, uh, you know, restricting access and making sure that only the people that should be able to see this can see this. Um, we need to obviously have um, traceability and audit logs and all that kind of stuff for uh, for making sure that you know if something did go wrong, you know we needed to see who had seen potentially uh, the balances. You know we can see that um, and all these kind of things. And we kind of thought, well, we're going to have to build all of this out. We're going to have to build authentication. We're going to have to build all this auditing and traceability uh, and restricting of access if we do this in React. We're going to you know have to kind of we're out of our element anyway, and we're now having to do some quite complicated things. Um, and Retool just did this out of the box, right? It integrates with our with our SSO provider. You know, you kind of just sign in, and you can restrict it to a certain group of people, and away they go, right? You know, and and for us to build, it was incredibly simple, and hopefully um, for them to use, it's incredibly simple as well. So, yeah, all round, I think uh, a good choice. No regrets. <laughs> yeah, really happy to hear that. And um, I I may have missed this, so. Forgive me if I did, but just to double click into this, uh, how did people actually do this in the past? Like before this existed, when you were initially approaching building this app, what was it that people were doing before this ever ever came to be? Yeah, so as I kind of mentioned, they they would send these tickets across, right? And as engineers, you know, or, or even our support functions, you know, they're they're swamped, right? You know, you you always are. Um, so it it gets prioritized, and it might sit, you know, in the backlog, or you know, sit lower down priority in the list, you know, and it might be a couple of days. Um, and if they need this data for, you know, we, we've had people use this data for proof of concepts, you know, where they just need, in order to, you know, trial something out, they just need the balance right now. Um, and if they're having to wait around for us, then that's impacting their time to production and their, you know, time to the, till they can see those results so that they can then evaluate their proof of concepts. Um, and obviously day-to-day, -day, you know, their uh, their day-to-day -day jobs, you know, some people need to see the balances to work out, you know, uh, how much money can be paid out on a given day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, waiting around for us 
for a you know support ticket to be fulfilled by an engineer or support member of the team um you know that, that's not really not really great so there were times and there have been times when uh you know we took a little bit longer than they needed and now they need it again you know they need a refresh of this data but this time you know don't wait a day or whatever until you get around to it um so by handing it back to them and just saying look here's a tool paste in your identifier up here instead of sending it to us in a support ticket just paste it in up here and and hit that refresh button and you'll see those balances you know and and you won't have to wait around for us um and so that's kind of really empowered a lot of other product teams within checkout to be able to go and, and you know come up with new interesting products based off the back of this um which is really cool to see yeah this this really leans deeply into this concept as well of just like giving time back for the more important things right like people on your support team they don't need to be going through tickets and then like sending you this data. Like these are things that exist in a data source. You can just slap a front end on top of it, begin to pull it through. You can self-serve all of this. And it really just enables, it sounds like it enables a lot of these other teams to focus on the actual priorities of the business and actually focus on things like supporting your customers or enhancing your product or or doing things of that nature. And so that's really remarkable. Um, And I I just love seeing this app. Uh, I'd love to uh, thank you again, Sam. This is a really fantastic app. Um, I'd love to maybe move over to Alex and uh, would love to talk through some of the apps you've built as well. Yeah, sure. Um, Let me share then. Um, Can you see it? I can see it. Cool. Um, so for the funny story uh, at ProSouth, so the startup that uh, Checkout uh, has acquired uh, two years ago, two years and a half ago, uh, we always wanted that that kind of app, like you know, having the admin part, um, like we could check like everybody aggregated, like different views, different from our product that we're selling, uh, monitoring everything, etc. Um, and so we really never found anything, uh, or we were really builders so we wanted to do it like internally the thing is uh, at some point we are really short staffed like we are like 14 uh, at this time and like there are like no focus on this uh, at all uh, so we did the focus was the core of the business with, like which is optimizing of course um and then like time passed and at check out we always had this like internal tool thing in mind but yeah, we're still once again focusing on like achieving our goals, working like on the core business on day to day. And 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 one day we just had like this internal demo or free tool, and it was like, whoa, that's exactly uh, what we need. Um, and so, like we are working like with, with uh, both commercial and tech teams. Um, and then at some point, um, like we started to to design one app uh so for a specific uh, need and so it's been developed again and again and then improved and then like some said some feedback loop etc uh etc um and then we designed another app and then another one etc etc um and that's where the idea of the performance app uh, uh, came where we really wanted to aggregate uh everything because like a, a bit of like duplication of work in the end because there are like too many yeah too many apps and and everybody was working the end a bit in his uh, own uh, um, yeah uh, way uh, and so we decided to create all this hub uh, so as you can see at the top uh, there's like multiple uh, apps just so like in the header just like a normal website and that's really splitting the different needs so sometimes more uh, um, techy sometimes more uh, csm related uh, and you see like there's an admin part for us etc <laughs> like i was talking about <laughs> at the very beginning um and so yeah like people really needed autonomy uh, that was really the first thing that really led us to to creating multiple like apps <laughs> every day and imp- improving it etc etc um which leads me <laughs> to the first part of it so this is the home page that you can see um and csm wanted to have a, a good like portfolio track uh tracking um and you can basically select uh, any account that you want to follow and it's going to give you a uh, a global overview of your portfolio with some metrics uh, the number of authorization acceptance rate etc um and, and you can then deep dive a bit more uh and 
something called the data explorer. So this part uh, will definitely allow you to deep dive more into your portfolio that you have uh, created. So you can select merchant, the time span, and it will automatically create uh, multiple predefined graphs uh, and metrics. So you can, of course, filter a subset of your data thanks to Rito's pre-existing component. So the second part is, once again, like more deep dive in the, into the acceptance rate. So here, like breakdown of error codes, uh, deep dive over time, um, like some percent uh, uh, graph chart, etc. So this is done automatically uh, without, once again, needing to, to develop anything. And finally, you have traffic insights. So this is probably the first tool that we had initially. Um, so th the need for this one was we have multiple sources of data. Uh, so coming from one team, then another team, and then like linked uh, into like the same payment flow in the end. And it was a bit manual and complex for this, uh, like the tech team to, to find all the information for a single transaction. And so we just created this like app. And so you just have to input one ID right here, and then it's gonna query whole checkout uh, data uh, related to this ID, uh, organize it, uh, try to, to split and get some information on the right, uh, like really what's organized, uh, what's really matter or not. Um, so yeah, uh, in the end, it, it's funny because it was not that complex uh, at the beginning. And the more we were moving inside, the more feature were added, and then some new feature uh, Ritual has released, then we were allowed to uh, improve it again and again and again. Uh, but yeah, basically, oh, you want that button, oh, you want that history, you want this. And so it was really drag and drop a uh, front end. And that's really what we <laughs> were looking for, like uh, no time to to, to spend uh, on this uh, <laughs> tricky part. Um, so yeah. Yeah, those on the fly updates are, are just like a really natural part of, of any app you build, really. Um, naturally, people will come to you and say, like, oh, I want this here, or I want this to look this way, or can you add this? And there's no just like build it once and then let it go and never touch it again. You, you're constantly having to go back. So being able to make those updates quick seems like uh, seems like it's been really helpful. I, I'd love to hear, like, just to get a sense of scale, how many people would you say are using these apps across everything that you showed us or, or what kinds of teams are using them? Um, so in terms of kind of teams you have yeah mostly split it in three teams so the csms uh, which are really commercial related wants to like i don't know generate uh some some data gather some data uh, for the merchants so they can easily come here uh download uh organize split uh draw etc you have the tech team which is more uh linked to let's say the the the, the deep part of the payment, which is really complex, uh, really like com even complex to find information about. Um, and then you have the performance team, so that that created this, uh, which is more like monitoring globally, uh, helping uh, everybody getting independence, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, creating these tools. Um, and for the number of users, we have something I haven't checked recently, but it's, it's like around two, 250 uh, each month. So, so yeah, that's a pretty good amount of people. Um, so, yeah. Totally. And I, one thing I noticed is across all of these apps, you have this sort of navigation bar that is structured between all of them. And I'd love to just hear what, one of the big things that jumped out to me the first time I saw this app was uh, the suggestion and the send a heart section. I, I'd love to hear like what happens when somebody actually clicks those and who's receiving the, the results of that? Yeah, yeah. Thanks to Rito again. So so the moment we wanted to design like the, the regrouped uh, hub, uh, I were like designing like a page that was linking to other pages and in the end it was like really ugly. Uh, and so really similarly, like uh, at the same time, uh, I think Rito released this header bar. So it just like spring. Uh, the app into so the top uh, and the bottom so the bottom being the, the heart of uh, the app uh, and the top that could 
allow that kind of thing, which is having a common header for every app. So you don't have to basically go on each app and reproduce the exact same thing. So yeah, just like creating a module. Um, and in the end, uh, we really wanted to get the closest possible to a real website. Uh, so getting the same experience, trying to navigate as uh, easily as possible. And in the end, uh, we ended up with this. Um, and for the second part of your question, so the hard button and, and suggestion. So the hard button was more like a, 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 a wink uh, to like the, the global uh, checkout team, etc. So if, if you click it, it's going to send a heart uh, via Slack uh, to us, like specific channel. Um, and more uh, useful, let's say, the suggestion one. Uh, so it's going to open a model. And then you just have to type any kind of suggestion. Let's say, oh, um, do you know if it's possible to add that source of data? Or do you know if this is possible to, um, I don't know, get that kind of ID if I click on this one, etc. And so we just like reviewing it, uh, reviewing it. And then it's going to once, once again send a message to Slack and then create a Jira ticket automatically. Um, so yeah, that's that's the full workflow that we told allow us to do. So so yeah. Totally. And the, the last question that's really top of mind for me, and this, this sort of goes to the whole group here, we've, we've seen a few of your apps, we've gotten a sense for how a handful of teams use Retool, we've heard the story of how you started with this single app, and you've moved to dozens and dozens and dozens of apps. And I'd love to just hear how is how is Checkout thinking about scale over over the next few years? Like, how are you thinking about these apps as they continue to proliferate throughout the organization? Um, that's a tricky one. Um, so I, I think obviously we're, we're not doing work for like a couple of months or, or, or like quarter or whatever, uh, it's designed to last. Um, everything is linked to like our backend, which is of course like solid having like prod staging, uh, pre-prod sometimes, et cetera, uh, depending on the needs. Um, and the goal of it is really to onboard as many people as possible because Initially, it was people coming to us asking, yeah, can you do it? Can you um, gather some data? Can you give me more information about this, etc." And so the more the company is growing, the more uh, the workload <laughs> is, uh, which means you want to give people independence. And we really designed this to make it as simple as possible. So when new people are coming in the company, they just like, request as you said as the very beginning through uh, our ticketing system request access and then like in few clicks uh, you really understand oh, okay i can just like add my merchant i can just gather some data select the time span etc and uh and then like the, which is crazy is like recently i haven't had any question related to this even for new people which means I guess it's kind of positive, like the app is simple enough. So they're just like, oh, no, I don't understand. Can you explain me? Can you show me how it works? So yeah, that, that's also the the magic of free tour, I would say. So, so yeah. Totally. Thank you for that, Alex. And Joe or Sam, uh, anything you would, you would add to that answer? Yeah, I think, um, I think like as Alex mentioned, um, really the with retail it's like the low friction approach so we want to make it really easy for um teams like like alex and his team uh to, to be able to build apps and to get that access um be able to create resources that need to be able to deploy that um as quick as they want to um for, and also for the end users being able to get the access that they need. Um, you can pretty much do that um, if you've got mature teams within um, your company that you know, uh, are not rapidly changing. Uh, you can do that in today's world with you know, the open ID feature of Retool um, and, and the, the role mapping capability of it. Um, and, and that kind of makes life a lot easier. Um, super low friction. You also enable um, JWT authentication, which is something that you know we're gonna we're gonna be using pretty heavily in checkout, um, and that really allows you to, um, if you want to, really lock down who can access 
you know, certain maybe sensitive data sources, um, uh, you know, if you're operating in something that's like a highly regulated environment, kind of makes your life a lot easier in that way, explaining and having that clear centralized structure of saying, right, well, my SSO is the source of truth for all of this stuff. So that's kind of the other side of it. Um, I think really longer term, um, like I'm super excited about, you know, retool getting to this kind of, um, kind of hands off deployment model where like the administration of it, you don't have to log in at all, um, to it. I'm super excited about that because, you know, it, when we eventually get there, um, it, it opens up the possibility for doing really cool things in companies, right? You can, instead of doing maybe what checkout's doing today, you know, two centralized clusters, shared clusters that multiple teams are using, you can start decentralizing that teams having their own clusters, um, locking it down from like a security perspective of where they can go, what they can do. Um, and it makes your life like easier in many aspects, but you need to be able to be able to manage that maintenance costs. So the hands off way, when we get it, that's going to make it like uh, really cool. That'll be, that'll be something exciting. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to invite the team back uh, once, once we're there to talk a little bit more about how things have changed and, you know, maybe we'll do a reunion episode or something, but uh, I suppose um, th this has been really great. Uh, all I want, really want to thank Alex and Sam for walking through your apps, talking to us a little bit more about how your teams use those apps and Joe in particular for talking us through how checkout builds these really robust and scalable uh, internal pieces of infrastructure that run all of your various business needs. And so uh, again, I want to just say thanks and thank you to everyone who was able to join and we'll go ahead and share out the recording afterwards. But in any case, I hope everyone uh, is well and has a good day. Have a good day. Thanks, Devin.